Alright, David Harry here and in this video I am going to be testing what I definitely know to be a good fast USB-C SSD with the iPhone 16 Pro Max specifically for recording 4K 120 frames per second ProRes and it is this SSD here. Now I will go into some detail about this SSD during my summary at the end of this video because I want to try and get into the actual testing as quickly as possible however there was one big issue I think that's arisen during this particular test which is something that I will go into a little bit of detail with at the end of the video however if you are into these types of things and more specifically maybe if you're going to be using something like DaVinci Resolve and things like that you may want to watch the best part of this video however there will be some chapters in the video so let me get into the video okay so I'm now over over onto the iPhone 16 Pro Max and as we can see here there is the SSD resting on the top of it this video is quite clearly not a video on how to mount an SSD because that's probably not the way you'd want to do it if you were outdoors anyways what I'm going to do right now is just to fly through the settings here so as far as the record settings are concerned the codec being used is ProRes 422HQ the resolution is 4K the color space is Apple log HDR and very importantly I've got that setting there which says if media drops frame I've got that set to stop recording so this means that the Blackmagic camera app will immediately stop recording if it detects even just one dropped frame whilst trying to record to the external SSD which will be a clear indication that the SSD is incapable of sustaining the necessary bitrate for these settings now what I'm going to do now is to switch over to the media settings and inside these settings we're going to see this option here which says save clips to so I'm just going to tap on there and as we can see there it is saying that we are saving to files now to be clear what that means is I am saving to a folder called black magic and that is located on the 1TB SSD 980 which is my external SSD so I have now switched to the camera and as we can see on here the FPS is set to 120 so obviously 120 frames per second now what I'm going to do here is to start playing this thing that is on my computer monitor which is what the iPhone is pointing at so there we go now basically what that is it's just another project that I've got on the screen in Resolve which I've set to loop just so that the camera or the iPhone has actually got something to like look at whilst it's doing this recording now what I'm going to do now is just hit the record button now again do not worry about like the picture quality exposure or anything like that this is quite clearly not a test of the actual camera to see what the quality is like or the settings associated with it this is literally just to see how long we can record 4k 120 in ProRes for using the Blackmagic camera app on the iPhone 16 Pro Max now I don't know how long I will be able to record for because that is going to be limited by either the amount of spare space that I've got on the SSD which is basically one terabyte and also it could be dictated to once again by my Sony ZV-1 which is this camera here that's recording the iPhone and just a point on this I know I might have sounded like I was being a bit negative in my previous video about the ZV-1 I absolutely love the Sony ZV-1 it is in my opinion an incredibly useful tiny camera which is absolutely fantastic for all kinds of content creation however if I have to be mega honest about it and as much as what I love the picture quality out of it and some of its functions the battery life on the ZV-1 is absolutely terrible anyways let me speed through this and let's see how far we get okay so I'm just gonna have to jump in here because unfortunately there is an exclamation mark over the shutter button now that's suggesting to me that there was a dropped frame and so obviously the Blackmagic camera app has stopped recording to the external SSD and it stopped recording at 18 minutes 26 seconds and 96 frames so let me just pop over onto my Mac and let's have a quick look at what's happened with this file actually just before I do switch back over I'm just gonna take some temperature temperature measurements of the SSD so the back of the SSD is reading 
around 35 36 degrees celsius and the front of the ssd is reading about 36 37 now if you give us a moment just testing the ssd directly in the enclosure and that is on about 36 37 celsius at its hottest point there okay so i'm now over onto my mac and for anybody who is interested this is a macbook pro m1 max and i'm recording it with an atomos ninja so basically just recording the hdmi output from the macbook to the ninja okay so as we can see here i've got the drive that i've just been using for the recording if i just open this up inside there's the black magic folder now there are two files in here because the first one was a quick test file and just that people know inside the proxy folder there are no files in there so i wasn't generating a proxy at the same time as like you know the full res image and stuff so therefore i would not have been interfering with the bitrate with something else being written to the actual ssd now the first thing that i'm going to do is to just open up media info here and let's see what this says about the file so it's that file there and on media info that is saying 120 frames 0.115 frames per second 4k uhd and it is obviously prores and it is actually prores 422hq now this 0.115 i'm not gonna get bent out of shape about whatever that's all about it is quite clearly waking so i'm just gonna leave it at that as far as that's concerned now what i'm going to do is to jump into davinci resolve here now i'm just going to just quickly set up a project and i will guide you through exactly what's going on now as far as resolve is concerned i am on resolve studio 19 and oh not media pool uh, let's see and as far as checking for updates is concerned there are no updates to be had because i am on the very latest version which is 19.0.1 now what i'm going to do here is switch over to this type of editing because i'm terrible at the other one and i can only just about do this one so what i'm going to do here now is go to import media I'm going to navigate. Actually, it is already selecting the one terabyte SSD 980, and that's because I just actually quickly tested it to make sure that it was going to work. And obviously, it is inside the Blackmagic folder there. So I'm going to select that file there, which is the correct file. Let me just open that. Resolve is going to ask me, do I want to use the frame rate for that file as the basic frame rate for the project? So I'm going to say change which is going to allow it to select the frame rate for the project. Now what I'm going to do is open up settings and as we will see here, the project is automatically selected 120 frames per second because it's matching itself to the frame rate of the first file that was imported there. So let me come out of there. I'm just going to drag that file to the timeline. And what I'm going to do is quickly come up to the file inspector. We'll have a look in here. And this is also confirming that the frame rate is 120 frames per second. Obviously, it's Apple ProRes 422HQ. And I'm at a resolution which is 4K UHD. Now, interestingly, it is recording AAC audio. Now, just on that point, if you are going to be recording ProRes files, just remember to select uncompressed audio with these things. I just didn't select uncompressed audio because... I forgot to do it and I wasn't actually recording any meaningful audio anyways now this will not have interfered with anything to do with the bit rate and if anything AAC is obviously a lower bit rate than uncompressed anyways but nonetheless if you are going to be selecting ProRes as your video codec option for recording on any device that will record ProRes make sure to also select uncompressed audio with it anyways as far as the file is concerned as we can see here again do not worry about like the picture quality the file is playing absolutely fine in fact let me just 
mute that audio there and it will also scrub through the timeline perfectly well as we can see there as well so basically the file is actually working properly and all the rest of it now as far as oh yeah and by the way this is playing directly from the external ssd so the ssd is well fast enough to actually play back the files easily within an edit now if we go to the end of the file there that is the actual file length now i've completely forgotten what the length of it was during the recording so i will flash up the time of the recording on the screen right now and let's just see how that matches up against the time that the actual clip is reporting within the timeline now there may well be some slight discrepancy there however i am going to hazard the guess that those two times are going to be very similar and i think the discrepancy is just going to be a rounding error when like you know the black magic camera apps you know comes across this dropped frame and i think what it does do is just kind of knock back a bit on its internal buffer and then it'll just truncate the file appropriately which i will suggest is what would cause any differences if they are there between the recorded like version of the frame rate and what we see on the playback here anyways what we have seen here from what i have shown you is that the file itself is fine there is not Nothing wrong with the recorded file the issue here is my combination of external SSD which is basically made up from a USB-C to NVMe enclosure and an NVMe Gen 3 SSD now there are some interesting things about that particular combination for that SSD which I will now just go into a little bit of detail about when I do my end summary okay so to my end summary and what I'm going to do first is just to explain to you what exactly this SSD is now this is a Sabre and enclosure which is USB-C 10 gigabits per second and it will accept NVMe SSDs into it and it also comes with its own 10 gigabits per second USB-C to USB-C cable now the actual NVMe SSD that I am using within the Sabrent enclosure is a Samsung SSD 980 which is a Gen 3 SSD now the reason why I'm using a Gen 3 NVMe SSD with inside this enclosure is because I've done a ton of testing and I've never been able to come across any combination of enclosure with a NVMe SSD inside of it where the NVMe SSD is Gen 4 and the reason for that is because all of these USB-C iPhones are limited to something like 4.5 watts of power delivery and what you're going to find is that most enclosures enclosures like this one or even like you know Thunderbolt enclosures which are backwards compatible with USB and such like they're going to have issues when they have got a Gen 4 NVMe SSD in now when I say issues it's not the enclosure and the SSD that's the issue the issue here is the lack of power delivery or the like limit of power delivery within all USB-C iPhones so basically this particular SSD is absolutely perfect for the USB-C iPhones now I have done some very strenuous testing with this particular SSD in a number of videos and on the screen right now you are going to see the results of one of my speed tests whereby I was comparing the iPhone 15 Pro Max to the iPhone 16 Pro Max and I'm quite sure you can see there that the actual read and write speeds between the iPhone 16 Pro Max to this particular SSD are very impressive now as we can see there this particular SSD is well capable of sustaining the necessary bit rate for recording 4k ProRes 120 which is in the region of about 440 megabytes per second however there is another consideration that we have to have here and that is that that bit rate has to be sustained now we can afford probably for it to go slightly below that at certain points but that depends on like the way the data is being cached and buffered and stuff like that but in general it has to be 440 consistent now what I'm going to suggest here is that there's two possible reasons why I cannot fill this SSD up right to its very end with a single take and that quite possibly is because maybe the SSD does dip momentarily very quickly and is unable to actually 
continue with that like continuous stream of 440 megabytes per second or the other option here could be or the other reason here could be maybe it's just not going to happen at all. I don't know <laughs> what it is. I'm actually get, kind of getting quite confused with a lot of the things that I've been doing over the last few days to do with these tests because I'm seeing results that I'm not really expecting to see. And I've not so far come across anything that will actually do one massively long continuous take. Now, there's probably some people out there thinking, hold on a minute, Dave, surely 18 minutes is fast enough for like 4K 120 at ProRes and stuff. And you know what? For the vast majority of things, that is absolutely correct. So in that instance, I would say that this particular SSD combination is definitely a really good one to use, especially if you don't want to be going past, say, 15 minutes or so, which like I've just said, I don't know how many people are actually doing those kind of lengths of record times at 4K 120. 20 Pro Res. However, I just wanted to see if I could get an SSD that would actually sustain itself right the way through to fill up the SSD. Now, if I do find an SSD that will do that, I will definitely do a video about it. However, right now, you've seen the performance of this particular SSD, and you know, you can make your own mind up yourself as to whether or not this SSD would be useful to you. Now, on that point, there will be some links in the video description below taking you to videos to do with this particular SSD, the construction of it, or basically how to put it together, which is super easy. And also I will link to that particular speed test as well. And I might have another speed test to do with this particular SSD. And there will also be like a bunch of links within the video description below here for all the stuff that I've used within the video as well. Anyways, if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're into this type of stuff, I'll be doing a bit more of it as well in the coming few days uh, because I really can't give up once I bite onto something that I want and I really want to find this SSD that's going to do the job that I would like to see it do and if that is the kind of thing that you're into and stuff to do with the iPhone 16 Pro Max and some like the Mac stuff in general and things like that video editing and crap like that then you know maybe a sub to the channel might be worth it anyways I'm David Harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now